Thank you for having me this afternoon. Before I commence, I must confess that this gathering is not by accident because success does not come to everyone by accident. It comes via commitment of one's strength, mind, wisdom, knowledge, and determination, provided that changing of mindset remains constant in every society. I am a, a graduate of a computer science that does not know anything about computer but in agriculture. I am from Kanko village in Ushishila government of Niger state. And the full meaning of the word Kanko means big farm. Where we have potential of vast land with irrigation facility, with irrigation facility, with a dam of capacity of 3.5 cubic metric ton of water. The, whole, the entire village was manned by all agriculture, agriculture. But in, since 1980s, the the, the condition of the community was 75% of the community were living in poverty. Only 25% were living above poverty, which my father has to be a part of them. The only successful families in the community were those that were able to send their children to school to acquire a degree, to gain a government job, of which my father was a champion farmer living in poverty. He now also wanted to see how he can also have a decent life in the world. He now put me into school at the age of five, was going to he put me in primary, in private school in my local government area. The distance between my village and local government area was seven to eight kilometers. And there, when I was going for my primary education, I was wearing two uniforms a day because my father had nobody to help me in the farm because we must farm before we eat. Today I'm going to talk to you on a topic, rice more than just a meal, meaning that the opportunities in rice value chain. If you compare what to call, if you, if you, if you think of Nigeria as a whole, the major resource economy of Nigeria is crude oil. And if, let's take a, as a instance, during the crisis of COVID-19, where the oil control was locked down, the consumption of crude oil and the petrol was reduced by 80%. But we cannot stop eating food. We have to farm before we eat. Then the country was dependent on importation of food. If the crisis should exit that period, what will be the fate of our nation today? The answer is this we have to change our mindset. My father made up his mind to train me to school so that I can be, have a degree so that for me, for me to have a decent life to also pull him, pull him out, out of poverty. I remember when I was going to school in the primary school, I have to go to school with a bike after my, my after my close from school, I still have to branch farm to help my father. I was doing two things at a day. I'll go to school and I'll still come back to farm to help my father. In those days, all the mission of my father was to see that I have a very sound education to acquire a degree so that I can pull him out of poverty. Unfortunately, it doesn't go the other way. During my secondary school, I was opportune to meet with the children of rich men. In, in those days, whenever I'm in presence of my colleagues, they'll be sharing their lifestyles. Their father, my father is this, my father is a barista, my father is an ambassador. And then when it comes to my, my turn, I kept silent 
because my father is a farmer. And in Nigeria, once you just you are a farmer, you just you are nobody. Kept silent. I was thinking, ask, continue asking myself why my father is a farmer. Why my father didn't go to school so that I can have a decent life in the world. My father kept sacrificing after my graduation from secondary school. I got admission to Federal University of Technology here in Mena. I applied for a civil engineer as a course, and unfortunately, you know the way the, the way the country the, the, the jam situation is. They later gave me ad agriculture as a course. I denied the admission because my father has been a champion farmer for more than years, and that nothing happens. There's no any difference. He's still in poverty. Why would I go and study agriculture in the university? I rather change. I still wrote another jam. Unfortunately, in the year 2010, I was admitted here in the Federal University of Technology as Computer Science. I was glad that half, so, so that I can be a software engineer, be an instructor, so that I can have money to pull out my father out of poverty. After my graduation, I got a job with Nigeria Telecommunication Company, Airtel, where they were paying me 50,000 naira per month. With this, I was calculating my feeding allowances, my transportation allowances, even my accommodation have to be within this 50,000 naira. And my father has made up his mind, I'm now a graduate with a degree. I'll pull him out of poverty. That was how I was struggling. To the extent that the most challenging part of it in my life was when I was working here in Mina, and my father took a loan with a microfinance bank worth a million naira the whole community to buy a fertilizer. Unfortunately, the flood washed everything away. And the farm was not insured. So I was here in the office working and I have a phone call that my father was being arrested by soldiers. I cried. Why me in this world? Why me in this world? I went to where my father was detained, and I asked them to erase the name of my father as an indebtor. They should write my name as indebtor so that I can pay. Part of my salary, I decided that 50% should be gone to the loan I took, my father took so that I can pay as life goes on. So that was how I was struggling it. And the breakthrough came when the Ifad I had a breakthrough, breakthrough during intervention of Ifad VCDP when the International Fund for Agricultural Development in collaboration with the Federal Government of Nigeria decided to key in into poverty eradication and job creation in rural areas through agriculture, or rice value chain, or cassava value chain. Our location, our village was one of the locations. When the, the state coordinator met my father that this is what they want to do in the community, and that they want a youth, a graduate, that can pilot the whole activities, they gave me, my father gave them my contact, one they invited my father thought they are going to offer me a better job. So when I came back, I came, when my father was very anxious after having a meeting with them. And the first thing that came out in their mind was that, please, we, how much is my size? 50,000. They want me to change my mindset and embrace agriculture as a business. I should stop seeing agriculture as a poor man business, but a big man business. When I came, went, went to weekend and met my father, this is the situation. My father thought they are going to offer me a job. No, they are not offering me a job. But con to continue with what you have been doing for more than eight years, I made up my mind that, inshallah, I will be there. I resigned from the job I was doing and I uh, embraced agriculture as a business. And uh, the first training I got from the program was GAP. Good agronomic practices. You know, in those days, as a farmer, you just broadcast the, 
the, the, the, the seeds and the other things and the, everything was manual and that was why as a graduate you're going to farm it looks so embarrassing while you're a graduate you're still going to farm look at it, it's just it's so an ugly that you are a graduate having a decent you you are going to a farm so then the program introduced me to what we call good agronomic practices because it's more than 80s the average yield in the community was just 1.5 metric tons per hectare which is very minimal, very poor. Compared to other countries, Thailand and China and India have been producing 10 to, 10, 10 to 12 metric tons per hectare. And that we have the same potentials, being the land or the water resources. Why can't we emulate so that we can step our feet into the, the same shoe with them? I got the training from the University of Agriculture, Makodi, on good agronomic practice and mechanization. So on how to avoid using manual methods by going to mechan mechanized farming and also good agronomic practice to avoid direct seedling by going to transplanting so that we can have the good yield. So in the community, everything I learned, I say, I must put everything into practice. I started putting it into practice the first year. Of my practice, I heat up more than from 1.5 metric tons to 6.5 metric tons, which is a very good number. I start having a million, I start feeling myself a big boy. <laughs> so, this is real. That is the only aspect in production. So, this is real. Then, my father started feeling it, yes, this is real. Now, you see, also in those days, we do what we call manual threshing. The program also introduced us to how we will be using the mechanized threshing so that another youth, some youth can, all be, can also be carefully employed in the value chain. And in those days, if you consider after the production, there's no market because the whole country is more on importation of rice, relying on from China and other things seeing that our, what we are producing is not proper. The program also came up with a very good initiation, aggregating. That after the farmers have done the harvest, there's warehousing where we do the quality control, you do the weight and measure to, to the standard of quality that suit the off-takers. There, I was able to also champion this, the, 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 the process of which I employed Five graduates in the five graduates in the aggregation center. I pay them, I pay them thirty thousand naira monthly. <laughs> Directly, ten, ten youths are employed under me, under my payroll, and indirectly, more than twenty-seven people are employed under labor. <laughs> so this is my youth. Uh, 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 quality control is a graduate of computer science also he will be take care of everything within the pro having this knowledge the program owner also have now become a champion in the community the entire state to the extent that the program now sent him to lead a team of five youths from nigeria to attend an agro pastoral summit in cameroon <laughs> where i uh, as a panelist, I gave a lecture on water management and, and uh, land management. There I become top and I seen agriculture as a business. Uh, there, a few years later, May 2019, I was also given an official invitation from the, for, to represent Nigerian in Senegal to s discussing the modalities on, the, on how to tackle the importation of agri-produce agri from uh, to, 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 to African countries. There I was set as a panelist to discuss on how the modalities, the, the, the chances, the privileges in the right value chain, where the youth, more youth can be employed in the value chain. There I met with some of the, some, some of the youth from the Ghanaians that they, they also discussed their, account, the, the, their problem facing in their rural areas of poor agronomic practices. There I championed the team and I also put them through 
and uh, as I'm speaking to you, they are doing very well. This is my life achievement. Through agriculture, I was able to get married to a very beautiful three kids, sponsor my wife to school to be also be a computer scientist. Because being a graduate as a computer science, I don't have time to go for to practice computer. I rather train, put my, my wife into school to train her as a computer scientist. You can see this is my house. And this is the awards I've obtained. I, was, I received the award in Sheraton Alton Abuja as the best rice producer in Niger State and also best best aggregator in, in Niger State. This is another award. Thank you for listening. My message is this. Please, agri is one of the agri I mean, Nigeria future economy. Youth should be engaged in agriculture. When you see, ag you see green, green is agri. You see green is money. Thank you.